What I have here, I know some of you guys are not going to like. This is a $300 single board computer. With a price like that, of course, it does have some moderately impressive specifications, including an 8-core octa-core ARM CPU with a max clock speed of 2.25 gigahertz. We have about 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory and 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage. In the box, we have a couple little manuals here, including their uh, oh, oh, wow embedded service, which will allow you to install your preferred OS directly from the cloud. So that'll be interesting. Additionally, it has these two little antennas. One is for Bluetooth and the other is for Wi-Fi. You can see these little teeny tiny antennas right there. Now the actual board itself does have a very decent expandability options and a good set of IO as it should at this price point. And before I get too far, I do want to note, this is the one I have. If you go a little cheaper, if we cut the RAM and the storage in half, you get this for $199, which is still expensive for a single board computer. <laughs> Also, they sent me a fan. I'm not sure if everybody gets this. Oh, cool, there it is. Edge 2 Active Cooling Kit. Yeah, I don't think they sent me a case. Apparently this is the case, which would have been cool, but it looks like this fan just screws into the uh, pre-included little holes here. Looks just like that. But we, we first, before I put that on, we need to check out the actual board. I'm gonna go down to a little uh, cheat sheet here first. Apparently it has extreme GPU performance. Uh, that gives us a four core GPU at one gigahertz clock speed and high speed wireless. The Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi six, which is very nice. I will be having a video coming up going more in detail on Wi-Fi six, so subscribe. Don't miss that. Maker friendly with Pogo pads. I think it's a seven pin. Yeah, if we go ahead and look here on the back of the board, we have seven pins there for a USB extension, UART debugging, and it has five volt power out option. Additionally here, we do have an RTC battery right here, right behind that uh, little USB port. And we of course have various interfaces and extension or expansion options, including three camera options here on the top of the board. And I do believe those support up to 48 megapixels. And then on the bottom of the board, we have more expansion options. You could see those right there. I'm not gonna go into super detail on all of them, including some uh, XPWR pads right here on the back. Now, as far as everything else, here's my little cheat sheet. We got our little fan header here, which I'll be plugging in right there in just a bit. From the fan header over, we have a USB 3, a USB C, which is a USB 3.1. We have our HDMI out, a USB C that's a PD only. And then of course a USB 2.0, which it would have been nice just to make it a three, but whatever. Little RGB indicator in there. And then on this side, we have a few different buttons, including a little reset button. We have a function button and a power button. Right here next to these uh, little camera expansion options, apparently that is a digital microphone. So depending on, even if the quality is garbage, it's still nice to have. Oh, there's two digital microphones. And that's basically it. Right here where we have that little A and B is the uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And if I do look at the manual, and I still don't know which is which, but I know the uh, the rectangle one goes into A and the other one goes into B. <laughs> and then on top of the board, we have all our various chips and components, including that rocket chip CPU. We have our eMMC flash storage, our RAM, and various other chips to make the whole thing come together to make a fully functional computer. So now let's go ahead and pop on these little antennas and then install our fan. We got our dangly bits. But before we get into that, we need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Linode is a wonderful cloud computing platform where you can spin up various Linux distribution servers or use a wide range of their one-click installers to get some popular services you may be interested in running with ease. With a range of configuration choices, such as a $5 shared plan, all the way up to dedicated CPUs and GPUs, there's bound to be something that will fit your needs. And better yet, you could get started today with a $100 60-day credit it, just go ahead and check out the link down below. All right, it's been a couple hours and I've been playing around with this thing. And first of all, the fan. The fan installation is pretty easy. All you do is get the little thermal pad that's included, stick to the CPU, peel the other end off, put the uh, heat sink and fan in place so the uh, screws line up with the brackets, screw it all down and you are good to go. It looks really good it, and it, overall the installation is really easy until you get to the part where you're gonna plug in the little fan header. Me, I got these big old sausage fingers, and 
by mistake, I ripped out some of the wires. Now this is repairable, but I don't have the tools to do it. So going forward, this is only going to have a heat sink, which I guess is better than nothing. With that, this is the Oh wow wizard, I think is how you say it. And this software here is embedded, so it's always gonna be on there no matter what you install to the eMMC storage. So no matter what, you could always, like I said, hold down that function button, press reset, and it'll boot right on into it to allow you to do various system configuration tasks. So when you first boot in, this is the screen you get, just uh, lets you know what's going on. If I go over to network right away, I could go over to Wi-Fi, and then I could go ahead and enable my Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is currently disabled, so I'm gonna go over here, go ahead and enable it, and then this is the little loading screen it's gonna give you. And the reason why you'd want to go ahead and enable your Wi-Fi is because you can download like various operating systems through this and just install them directly. It's really nice, it takes out the whole needing to like load it onto a little SD card, plug it in and all that. You don't need to do that anymore. If we head over to the main menu, we can see our wizard. We can write an image to the eMMC dump network. We have some system settings, online scripts. So if we, when we go into the wizard, there's not too many options when it comes to the OS installation, but they do have guides on their forms of how to get other things. And you do that through here. You can also uh, go to the rescue shell, get some help, configure some stuff. But if we just go ahead and go to the wizard here and continue, this is gonna take us to where we can see our images. And you can see right here, we have two Android 12 images, as well as the GNOME and server edition or versions of Ubuntu. Now, later on, we're gonna go ahead and try out Android, but for now, I've already have, or I already do have Ubuntu on here. So I'm gonna go over and reboot our system and go into Ubuntu. And here we are, you can see I created my very own user account. The default is the one you saw and the password is the same as the username. But jumping in here, we can see it is a slightly modified version of Ubuntu. Well, when it comes to the uh, GNOME configurations, for example, we have a little application menu and a little workspace switcher down here. But other than that, it's fairly stock. It does have Firefox pre-included, but for me, the snap package just wouldn't work. So I ended up needing to uh, grab Chromium. Here is the system, and you can see this is super quick. There's no lag or anything like that when you're actually interfacing with the system. They do have some interesting choices with the software they pre-included, such as a Thunar there. They have Hex Chat, Midnight Commander, uh, Transmission, which is nice, and a bunch of Pulse Audio stuff. Now, if we actually go back there, and I'm going to open up our web browser, which is uh, Chromium. Give that a quick open. I can show you that it can handle... Uh, YouTube videos and all that perfectly fine. I mean, it's a very usable computer. Definitely more usable on a uh, using a desktop environment than most other ARM single board computers out there. God, YouTube homepage is just absolute trash. So for example, playing just like a 1080p video here and actually making sure this is 1080p. So if we change that, make this theater mode, you can see there's absolutely no stutter, no lag. Skipping around, it is snappy quick and that's a big deal when it comes to just having a usable computer is being able to render 1080p video like this and according to the website they could do up to 4k or 8k at a, i believe 60 frames per second and of course this is ubuntu so i could like quickly connect to my uh, nas real fast i'm gonna go ahead and pull a movie that's uh, of a rather large size and i believe this is a 1440p movie looks like about 20 megabytes per second which is pretty average for my piece of crap router and while it does do this, let's go ahead and talk about performance. And I do gotta say the performance of this Edge 2 is absolutely ridiculous compared to other uh, single board computers. For a single core score, I got 648, and I will note this is without the fan working, only the heat sink, so it probably would've scored just a little bit better with that fan spinning. So then when you, we talk about multi-core, it's ridiculous. With a score of about 2600, and that's compared to just under 700 with the uh, Orange Pi, and just under 600 with the uh, Raspberry Pi. Noted there are major price differences, but the actual cost to performance ratios is there for sure. And I mean, the uh, multi-core score on this Edge 2, if we compare it to, for example, a 2500U Ryzen 5 Pro, that has about just over uh, 3000. So it's basically as an ARM CPU on par with the uh, performance of a last gen Ryzen mobile CPU. Well, at this point, it's not last gen, it's last, last gen, I believe. And then sticking kind of with the theme of performance, this is just about moved over about 25 megabytes per second. MPV is pre-installed and we go ahead and skip around. Absolutely no issues, no stutters. 
to the point where this little single board can very well be a replacement for a personal computer, something I can't say with most single board computers as I believe the use case for most of them would be either single use home server type things or more or less tinkering around. Now this is an ARM system so it's very difficult to get things like Steam and all that working, but I do believe 0 AD is something that we should be able to get going. So this does uh, ship with Synaptic Package Manager. If I go ahead and open that up. 0 AD, the very first thing there. Let's go ahead and check that and mark for installation. So unfortunately, the uh, 0 AD is not going to want to work for us at the moment. We're having a full screen issue. Let's see if Super Tux Cart will go ahead and open up for us. Obviously, you could go ahead and use this for uh, ARM emulation and with ROMs of various uh, retro consoles and things like that if you would like to. But honestly, this, uh, this hardware is a little bit overkill for even that. There we go. The download is just about complete. And now, theoretically, it should work. So let's go to Games, Super Tux Cart. And it's opening. Beautiful. Let's go there and let's go here and let's see if that works. Oh ho ho, full screen, 1440p, baby. Let's go. I mean, it's really not saying much, but there's absolutely no performance issues at all. So like I just said, if this is going to be running perfectly fine, any uh, emulation should be an absolute breeze, including like a... Uh, Nintendo 64 and things like that. It does technically have a dedicated GPU with a couple cores at a gigahertz. It's rendering all these graphics perfectly fine. If I was able to get 080 to work, that would have been fine as well. But yeah, that's just the one example. What I think we're gonna do real quick is boot in and show you how easy it is to use their uh, oh wow menu thing. So I got the card here. I'm just gonna hold down the, oh, it's a little warm. I'm gonna hold down the function key and hit the reset key. And now it should boot us right into that embedded system. All right, here we are, connection fail. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna go under Wi-Fi, waiting network, connected. So now we can back out of there and then go to our wizard. So let's continue, continue, and let's go ahead and select Android. So let's download that. We can see the total size is gonna be just under 800 megabytes. All right, and the download is complete, so we're gonna go ahead and install it. And this usually takes basically no time at all. And there we go, took 53 seconds, so just under a minute. So let's reboot our system, reboot, and see, see what it gives us. Because I haven't tested this one out. Oh, there we are. Looks like my TV booting up. Android. Okay, so we got a mouse here. It looks like we have the Google Play Store, so that would be really nice if Google Play services actually worked on here. Uh, display, make that a little smaller. HDMI, resolution. Uh, well, that's auto. I'm gonna make sure that it's set to the uh, highest resolution possible, which seems to have already been 1440p at 60 frames per second. This might actually be a better use case than uh, Ubuntu if I could get some Android games on here. All right, we're connected to Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and sign into the Play Store. All right, we're in. I shouldn't have even uh, screwed around with Ubuntu today. Let's open up the Play Store. Ooh, I wonder if we can test the audio recording capabilities. This is a recording test. This is a recording test using the microphones that are on this thing. <laughs> So I don't know if that sounded bad, but oh, it's not letting me click to sign in. It's truly a sad day. Oh, oh swipe that up. <laughs> Let's try something else. Dare we try some Pug Mobile? Let's try some Pug Mobile. Let's go with that. Let's spoil ourselves with that uh, HD resolution. All right, this is where Call of Duty stopped me. So, okay, I can actually accept the EULA and all that. I plugged in a controller. I, can't, I, I hope it works. <laughs> the controls are not good, but I mean, it's actually loaded up and playing, so that's kind of cool. Apparently, I have it set to auto sprinting, so. Oh, I saw somebody over there. Oh, 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 I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I need to turn up the sensitivity. Look at that. <laughs> oh, what's that right there? Okay, yeah, I can't use the controller. That sucks. Can I use the keys? Oh, no. Oh, no. Am I actually going to get a kill? Using the mouse to... <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's just disrespectful. There's probably a way to set up the Xbox controller as a gamepad, but I don't have the time at the moment. But it is cool that uh, this even is an available option 
to get in here. I mean, there's no lag or anything like that. The graphics are kind of trash on a uh, 32 inch 1440p screen, but I mean, as good as you're gonna get. Let, let, let's get at. Oh, there's somebody. There's somebody. Stop sprinting. Stop sprinting. If I actually kill somebody again. All right, so it's the next day. My uh, camera died last night. The room was like 100 degrees, so I was tapping out from there. But this thing right here is definitely cool. If you need a little ARM computer that's perfectly capable for web browsing, light gaming, and even media consumption, this is gonna be wonderful. And if you're somebody who has like a Raspberry Pi, as a little home lab, maybe running a small media server, this is well beyond the capabilities that you'll need to do something like that. This specific $300 configuration is a little dramatic at $300. The $200 one does make more sense for most people, as generally, especially with a ARM system like this, eight gigabytes is going to be more than enough RAM. And if you are gonna be doing something like a media server, chances are you're gonna be either connecting it to your network NAS or plugging in some uh, USB-C external hard drive to it. This device does make me really happy though because it kinda shows what ARM systems can truly be capable of as generally they're looked at as really cheap computing devices. Which I mean I have a Raspberry Pi in this little uh, cute little tower case here. This is the eight gigabyte model and the actual board was I think somewhere around 60 to 70 $70. And for some retro gaming and simple server stuff, it's perfect, but like I said, this can do really a lot more. The main thing we are missing out on, like I mentioned earlier, is the Ethernet included and these uh, pins right here that are ever so popular on the Raspberry Pi. Ultimately, this isn't going to replace this. They are two different use cases, but this little device here, I have to say, is excellent. With all that, subscribe. I'll have a link to a text version of this kind of review. And uh, with all that, I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.